I am glad to be here to celebrate this happy occasion, this time when we look forward to the future, to recall the achievements that marked your time here at NC State. We look forward to using your statistical skills to solve big problems to benefit humanity in a myriad number of ways. But this is also a time when family and friends will ask you what you do. If you really like to be left alone, a really good answer is, I'm a statistician. <laughs> if you are a cardiologist or geneticist, people would get all excited and want to talk with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but statistician? There is a complete misconception as what we do as a profession. What we do is solve problems, often big problems. I'm a statistician? Try this. I design and analyze clinical data to, from clinical trials to cure cancer. I design systems to provide great options for shoppers. I facilitate better web searches. I help design studies that reduce air pollution. I design better french fries at McDonald's. Now we get interest from people. Well, one of the misconceptions is that we work on a computer all day. Analyzing data, producing fancy graphs, talking in some strange language that sort of sounds like English but is really incomprehensible to anybody except statisticians. But that's not true. That's not what we do. That's not the life of a statistician. The truth is that we spend most of our time working with other people to solve problems. I and most other successful statisticians that I know spend more than half my day directly talking with other people. Being able to communicate with non-statisticians is essential. Learning the language of the people we work with is important. And being able to communicate statistical concepts in ways familiar to our peers is a great skill to have. I would argue that it is at least as important as, this, as the statistical skills. We can build all the great fancy models with great predictive power, incorporating all of the right assumptions, and it still would not be good enough if we and still fail to achieve our goals of solving problems unless we communicate. How do we learn to communicate? Try living the life of our co-scientists. The best advice I received as a rookie statistician was to get out of my office and do whatever it was that my colleagues were doing. Get your hands dirty. They were doing chemical or biological assay development, so I went and developed assays. I was in the laboratory doing the work, pipetting the reagents, interpreting the results. No one does statistics just because it's fun, though I really think that they should. But they do statistics to solve problems and achieve a goal. And good statistics is often the most efficient ways of achieving those goals. When you know what our non statisticians and colleagues know, you will understand the larger picture that puts the details of our work in perspective. We cannot do our job without properly understanding the larger context. Um, Edward Deming, a well-known statistician, had a wonderful point to draw, drive home this point. A man was sitting at a table, feet up on the table, just sitting there relaxing, and his supervisor came and asked him to clean the table. Well, the man says, I'm sorry, I don't know how, I can't. And the supervisor looks at him, gets annoyed. What do you mean you don't know how to clean a table? Well, the man says, well, you know, if I want, I don't really know what we're going to do with this after I'm done cleaning it. Until I know that, I can't clean it properly. If I want to plant plants on this table, I'm just going to swipe off some of the dirt and start planting the plants. If I want to have a picnic on this table, well, I'm going to get off the dirt, I'm going to sweep it off, I might clean it a little bit, I might put a tablecloth on it. If I want to prepare food on this table, I'm going to wash it off, I'm going to swash, clean it with soap and water, and dry it off. If I want to use this table for surgery, 
Well, I'm going to clean it off. I'm going to wash it with soap and water. I'm then going to disinfect it. I might disinfect the legs of the table and the walls around the table in the room. I cannot do my job unless I know the broader context in which I don't need to do it. So what is it that we do? We are detectives and storytellers. Nature, the process that we are trying to investigate, keep providing us clues. And those clues are the data. The data are trying to tell a story. And it is our job to help explain the story. Oh sure, those data look like they're just sitting there on the, on the page, staring blankly at us. But deep inside, there's a story to be told. And it is our job to interrogate the data, review the evidence, torture the data if you must, and draw the story out of the data about the process. What we do is investigate processes. We efficiently solve problems because we efficiently discern the key characteristics of processes. That is what is common to the statistician working in the pharmaceutical industry, finance, e-commerce, retail, or web analytics. Never let the data sidetrack you. They are tricky. Consider the development of two different assays. Uh, these are dissolution assays for ass and tablets. Uh, what you do is you have six vessels filled with water, you drop a tablet into each one, you stir it up, and you wash it for how much drug is dissolved over time. Okay. The best assay is the one that has the least, is the most reproducible, the least variability. Okay, so after 20 minutes of washing the tablets being dissolved, you measure the amount of drug in there, and that's what we use to estimate the dissolution. Okay, so we have two assays, each with six measurements in each of the six vials. Okay, assay one gives us a standard deviation of 2.5. Assay two gives us a standard deviation of three. Which of those two assays is the best assay? One. Um, assay one. Any other thoughts? Neither. Neither. Uh, the correct answer is neither. With, an, with only six observations, that's too few to tell what's the difference between the two. Okay, you, you just don't know. Okay, taking your eyes off the process can lead you to bad results. Keeping your two eyes close and focus on the data misleads you. Finally, we must be leaders in our work. If you look at the details of our work style, it often doesn't look much like leadership. Scientists come to us with data, we analyze the data, interpret the results, convey the meaning of how we think the processes underlying the data generation work. But we must provide leadership. Can we do the experiments better, collect the data better, improve the processes, provide better decisions and decision processes? Is there a better way to think about the problem? A true leader does not tell others what to do. A true leader serves, helping other team members fulfill their potential to solve, solve important problems. We are in a unique position to do this. We must exercise our leadership. Part of our leadership is to defend the scientific method, the process of de developing scientific knowledge. As statisticians, we study processes and tell their stories. Since all life is governed by processes, we are very useful. Processes need to be studied in all areas of human activity. We work in pharmaceuticals, finance, forestry, environmental science, search engine design, retail. One CEO of a web analytics company claims that those with statistical skills are the Rosetta Stone of big data. Statistics is the growth career of the 21st century. There isn't any area of scientific inquiry that we cannot help. When you see a leave, there are statisticians working to bring that product to market. When Sylvania had manufacturing troubles for their TVs, statisticians designed the studies to solve those problems. 
When Amazon recommends a book, it is because statisticians developed a model to make this possible. Statisticians provide interesting recommendations or provide investing recommendations for hedge funds. When working on our daily challenges, always keep in mind the larger goals. What are those goals? To solve big problems. Choose a big problem and work to solve it. Here at NC State, you have been given a great education, worked with renowned faculty, and had opportunities to see some of those big problems. But there are plenty more out there, and new problems will continue to emerge. There are many problems to be solved, challenges to overcome, opportunities to help humanity. Be bold. Solve problems that you have been told cannot be solved. You will not have the specific education to solve many of these problems, but solve them anyway. It is most satisfying to be told that what you just did was impossible. And each of you have the capability to solve those seemingly impossible problems. I wish you luck in all of your endeavors and encourage you to do what you think or what others say is impossible. Thank you.